And now we are being joined by Indian astronomer pra Prajwal Shastri on the broadcast. Ms. Shastri, a very good morning to you. Uh, Ms. Shastri, can, could you tell our viewers what are the key objectives of uh, the Aditya L1 mission? Um, so you already kind of summarized it. So first it is uh, about understanding the physics of the sun. Uh, it's that basic uh, curiosity uh, about how things work. Uh, we know that the sun is a massive magnet. Uh, we know that it produces all this luminosity that is uh, because of which uh, living beings survive on Earth. Uh, but this is to understand more. So to our bare eyes, the sun looks like a very bright disk uh, but actually it's far from being a uniform disk it is uh, not only at very high temperatures it's like a boiling cauldron there's a huge uh, influence of the magnetic fields uh, that are generated even just on the surface not just that the sun as a whole is a massive magnet but on its surface there are a lot of magnetic fields which are constantly generated because it is uh, uh, it has basically uh, the content is basically plasma so charged particles it's sort of like a gas flame but not quite uh, and so there are these uh, charged particles at very high temperatures that generate magnetic fields so as a result the sun is a very very dynamic uh, system, uh, not only in a local sort of way, but also in a big picture sort of way. Uh, so there are things uh, that are technically called coronal mass ejections. So these are uh, uh, phenomena that occur on the surface of the sun, which we can see uh, where plasma is kind of squirted out of the surface of the sun uh, and then this happens at speeds of you know approximately a few thousand kilometers an hour and these this uh, sort of material of charged particles then diffuses out away from the sun and even reaches as far as the earth so uh, you mentioned space weather uh, so we talk about space weather, it's a slightly different from how we talk about weather on Earth because there is no atmosphere uh, really between the Earth and the Sun. It is more or less vacuum, but it's not exactly vacuum. There is, there is, there is some very, very tenuous uh, material and some of that is this stuff that is coming from the Sun. Um, and that's called the solar wind. So it's uh, it's uh, charged particles, it's radiation, and it can exert quite significant influence on certain aspects. So we wouldn't feel it as people uh, walking around on Earth. But now with all our electronic technology and all that on which we are heavily dependent, those things would be affected by uh, this sort of uh, solar wind and changes in it and these ejections that come out of the sun. Uh, so that is the reason why we want to understand it, not just to figure out how it works and why it works, but also to then uh, make predictions for our technologies on which we are dependent in order to protect them, etc. So that is one aspect. And the other aspect is, uh, you also mentioned that, although the sun is not the biggest star in the Milky Way, it's a very middle of the road star, uh, both in terms of temperature and in terms of mass. Uh, it's one of those so-called ordinary stars. Uh, there are many stars in the Milky Way which are much lower mass, much lower temperature, much higher mass, much higher temperature. Uh, nevertheless, the sun represents a sort of middle of the road star and understanding how things happen in the sun in great, great detail will help us uh, understand what we see in other stars. Now, other stars are much, much harder to study. The nearest other star we have is four and a half light years away, which means that light will take four and a half years to reach it. And all the other billions of stars in the Milky Way are much further than that. Uh, all the other billions of stars in other galaxies, which are outside uh, and which are different from our Milky Way, uh, similar in some respects, but different in a lot of respects. Uh, those stars as well, uh, we, we can never hope to uh, study them with the kind of detail that we can study the sun. Uh, so therefore, this is also important. And uh, uh, we today know that uh, the sun and our solar system is far from unique. It's just one in a 
billion billion uh, uh, such and virtually every uh, star in the milky way might have a planetary system around it we already know for sure that there are about 5000 planets Uh, just in our milky way uh, roughly 4000 stars have planetary systems so in that sense our system is far from unique uh, so study more about our system uh, our sun which contains most of the mass of our whole solar system uh, becomes uh, important and assumes significance for astrophysicists All right, Ms. Shastri, please stay with us. We'll continue with this conversation. Well, as of now, we're being joined by CNN News 18's Shristi Chaudhary to give us more insight on India's first solar mission, Aditya L1. Shristi, over to you. Yes. So, like the senior scientists have continued to tell us that Aditya L1 is a key moment for the Indian astronomers and the solar physicists who have been studying the sun for a very, very long time. We have been planning this mission so that we could study the sun from much closer point without the disturbance of the Earth's atmosphere. Once the rocket lifts up from uh, Sri Hari Kota at about 11:50 a.m., which is just a few minutes away, uh, the spacecraft is going to be placed into a low Earth orbit, and uh, after a certain maneuvers, after uh, after a process. Uh, a uh, process that lasts for about 16 days the spacecraft would be moved into an elliptical orbit and eventually escape the earth's gravitational pull and be placed at a point called L1 we need to understand that it's not going to be a very stationary orbit as the spacecraft is going to be placed into a halo orbit from where uh, it's going to continuously monitor the sun for the next 5 years isro will try it to extend the period of the mission as the previous missions have also lasted for a much longer time uh, why have we planned this mission because uh, the science Just have been collecting a lot of ground observations for the sun over the last uh, so many decades. This is the first time that we are going to place our equipments, uh, scientific instruments, which have been integrated by the scientists, uh, will be placed into space to monitor the sun uh, for the next five years. Uh, we need to understand the sun is a hot ball of fire, and it's it has three layers, which is the photosphere, chromosphere, and the outer one, corona. scientists are mostly intrigued by this outer layer of the sun which is which we call corona and it's only during the total solar eclipse that we get these moments where we can get those observations uh there are a lot of questions uh which have eluded scientists for years first uh the temperature of the low most uh layer of the sun is just about 5000 degrees celsius but when we go outer to the corona it's about a million degrees hotter now this is a million dollar question that uh, we don't know the answer to several missions in the past led by nasa and the european space agency have tried to unravel these mysteries so aditya l1 is a third such mission which is going to come from india so after nasa european space agency uh, isro is in the game right now 